character design is always a fun one and today I have some tips and tricks for you guys from experience using my tablet and Clip Studio Paint designing an original character for my series Apple Black. The first tip is to actually know who the character is, where they're from, what's their vibe, and make sure you have multiple iterations. I've been trying to figure out what this character looks like for years. Done several drawings over the years, not been able to nail it down beyond these drawings. I've had a couple sketches in between storyboards sometimes and never truly settled on something, but this is healthy. Experiment and leave no stone unturned. Next is me working on a character sheet and trying to make it successful which includes me figuring out the right pose. Obviously for this, I'm gonna keep it really simple because I'm just worried about getting the right design first. Eventually you can explore on the sheet and draw the character in more dynamic poses, having more fun, giving it more flair so that people can get the vibe of the character more. Camera angles, facial expressions, the list goes on. I like to keep my sheets organized, make sure at least one of them is colored in so people know what the colors are, but I'm pretty much gonna color the whole thing. Me playing with lines on the side to make sure everything is uniform, the height is uniform, all that stuff. Based off of all the iterations I've had in the past, I'm kind of fixing on one so I kind of know what I want to go for a little bit more and I'm just knocking it out. For the hair, I knew I wanted either braids or locks, but I think I've opted for braids. I still want to find something unique about them, something you've probably never seen before. I made the eyes darker on the bottom, almost like he doesn't sleep, or at least he sees some dark-ish, if you know what I mean. I also want him pretty hip and stylish, maybe some DMC Devil May Cry in him, and hopefully the series will convey that in style. And I also have to be consistent with the locks. I wanted to make them thick and I wanted just six. Cause I also have to think about a character that I'm gonna have to draw over and over and over and over. So I can't get too, too crazy with it. If it was something I was rendering 3D, then it's different. Cause once you create it once, you kind of have it for the most part. So also keep in mind what the character sheet is for. Animation, comics, video games, the list goes on. His wand, at least on the sheet, is a pistol. There's more to his wand than that. Wands in my series are reimagined from being the little tiny stick you'll see in Harry Potter to being really any item you want that has gone through a certain ritual. A wand could be cigarette, pair of dice, boxing gloves, a pocket watch. It's all based on the sorcerer's abilities and you guys can leave in the comments what your wand would be. It cannot be a body part. Get your mind out the gutter. Next would be to gather inspiration, do research, be respectful, and then test it out. You can see me here on Pinterest looking at a bunch of jackets because I kind of get the vibe of what I want him to be wearing. And I'm just looking around to make sure that what I put together looks authentic. He's kind of a bit of a new age hip commando and his cloak is gonna reflect that. There's certain things about the world and who he is that's gonna dictate certain aspects of his design. Like he is gonna wear a cloak. And in my world, a cloak is just pretty much a piece of clothing with a hood to it. It's tied to a respect thing within this world. And so I wanted to have that, but then I have some creative freedom as to what it looks like. It's not all uniform. Some are, some aren't, especially on special characters. I knew I was gonna have some fur because that's tied to a theme based on the fellowship he's a part of, but I still wanted it to be commando, hip, and you know, creative on my end, just doing whatever I wanted to do. So you can see me play around with ideas before settling on a stock. Again, to capture that authenticity, I was looking at a lot of bullets because I wanted that commando vibe to it. I was <laughs> like a little bit of a ramble. So I was looking at all of that and seeing how I could incorporate that into the design. I played around with a scarf and I think I kept it and you'll see how it looks in the end. His cloak is an infinity cloak so he can store an infinite amount of bullets within it so he's not going to run out of bullets. But how the bullet belt wraps around him, I played around with that as well and eventually cut it off. Despite the magic, another tip is to make sure you think of the design not just from a stylistic and fashionable sense, but also a practical sense, a functional sense, if that works for you and the vibe and essence of your story or whatever you're creating this character for. Making sure it all fits, but seeing where there is room for a practical yet still stylistic sense and which one is more important than the other. To see more experimentation, changing things here and there. Within your character design sheet, you also have to show obviously front, back, side. You don't necessarily have to have the drawings all the time, but just have glimpses of how the design looks from all these angles, as well as without his cloak. These are very useful when working within a team. Even though I'm a one-man army with this character design, it's still useful to have, especially because this is the first time I'm settling on this design. 
you want to do the same thing for some props and in this case the only thing i can think of that would deserve its own spot on the sheet would be his pistol you can even draw more of them and more angles but i don't think we need that many i played around with three holes piggybacking off of the earlier iteration we saw but i decided to go for something simpler again he has an infinity cloak so eventually you will learn that he has a reputation of having a lot of wands and so we're going to see more than one pistol or weapon type wand from him he can whoop out stuff from his jacket and it'll be a nice theme that we put together and eventually we'll learn what his favorite wand is but this whole time i'm playing around with the design again with these designs it's not 3d i have to make sure it's something that i can comfortably draw multiple times and still hit whatever deadlines i need to now we're just inking this is pretty straightforward in clip studio paint i tend to use the real g pen it's literally one of the default brushes and it tries to mimic the industry standard for inking manga in japan which is the g pen and I think it does a pretty good job at it. At this point, I'm pretty settled on the design. So we're just putting the stamp to it. You get the bullet belt around his neck, which I thought was pretty unique. Initially, I wanted to have it as a choker, but I just thought mm, it doesn't fit the character to have a choker with some bullets sticking out. But around the cloak, I think it works. Certain aspects of his design, as well as also something that's going to fit the world. And so if you follow my series at all, this style of shoes is very common. Almost like the sandals you see in Naruto or the slippers in Bleach, or how Ranking of Kings, everyone's shoes just look like socks. It's something that fits the world, it's something that's a stylistic choice, and here is no different. But you just need to find what works best for that character while still being in tune. A little nice trick here for the gun. I literally just copy and pasted. Again, this is just a character design sheet. In case another person needed to draw this character, I can just give them the sheet and not have to explain anything. So just copy and paste, remove the finger, and then I draw the rest of the gun. Pretty neat, right? Point is to have fun and experiment, especially on the sheet. Once you have things nailed down, then you can even draw more facial expressions to figure out how the character's face would look, if they're happy, sad, all those kind of things. Depending on what the project is, it would help everybody else on the team. As an example here, I'm just drawing another version of the character, having a cool foreshortening shot of him holding the pistol. Everybody's wands have names, and in time you will learn the name of his wand. Moving things around within Clip Studio Paint, make sure I get the right pose, and you can have a bunch of these. You have enough of them, the more successful the character sheet is going to be. I have several videos on character design and character design sheets. You can also go check out the rest of the channel. And once we settle, we do the same. Silhouette test is a major character design tip. You always want to make sure a block of the character shape. You want it to have a strong, memorable, bold silhouette. Something very interesting and easy to recognize. And that's a good way to know whether your design is interesting. This is a piece from Tomata Toro's Tumblr where they go over the character design of certain Overwatch characters. I tend to use these for my videos a lot. But even if you don't know Overwatch characters, I don't need to tell you who the characters behind me are even though they're all blocked out and they're just silhouettes. And that's how you know it's a good character design. I'm gonna use Clip Studio Paint to select pretty much all of it. And then we can judge based off of the one holding the pistol maybe and seeing how that works out. And honestly, it looks interesting to me. It looks like my vibe. You guys can let me know in the comments if you think the silhouettes are interesting. The pistol I'll say is the most basic cause that's a simple shape of a pistol. But I think we'll just mean the character for the first time. So I don't want him to whoop out all his interesting pistols and tricks on the first go. So I'm okay with that. But just the character himself, I'm pretty cool with. I think it works. I think it all works. But I think the character especially works. Or at the very least, depending on who you ask, definitely good enough. Now, like the art gods, we're just going to render and shade. Within Clip Studio Paint, I like to fill it all, basically using that silhouette, but maybe a different layer. Giving it a different hue to fit the environment. I've gone with a dark blue, reduce the opacity, and have it be a linear burn. There are other people that use maybe an overlay or multiply, but I use linear burn. The same type of layer, same blending mode, but maybe a higher opacity, and I use that to form the shading. In this case, I've filled the character again. That's why it looks darker. But I'm just erasing parts. So it's almost like the whole character is shaded on top of that initial layer. And I'm just erasing just certain parts of it. Another similar layer if you want. And I'm going in with the airbrush. Just to make everything less flat. A dash of white in the eyes on a separate layer as well. For that little shine that you have in the eyes. Another layer of maybe add glow or color dodge. I highly recommend you guys experiment with blending modes to see what works best for you. And I'm assuming there's a light coming from the bottom. I'm just having that fool around with the drawing play around with the color burn now playing with the color dodge or reducing the opacity as well and then i do a similar thing to the rest of the character design sheet there's also a chance to show the shading style there's some styles out there that have less shading in some cases none maybe to save time or a purposeful choice 
completely up to you. If there's an intense light from behind hitting the character, I might even go over some of the line art. And that tends to give illustrations a little bit of a punch. A neat tip for choosing color would be to follow a chart. You can create one yourself or use already existing ones. And usually all these colors mean X, Y, Z. So it's up to you which ones you choose based off of what they represent if they fit the character that you're putting together. This goes for characters, this goes for buildings, this goes for anything, props, anything really. And even if you don't use these charts and you break the rules, you just wanna be consistent and be able to justify pretty much 99.999% of the decisions that you make. Our How to Draw book, as well as the Matatoros Tumblr, and all of the character design world also knows to not have all the characters be saturated, there should always be a focal point, maybe in threes or twos, but nothing more than threes. You can have other colors, but maybe they'll be muted so they don't distract. And even in those three colors, there should be one that's more than the other two. Maybe you have a 60%, 30 and a 10, or a 70 and a 30, something like that to bring balance. It can't all be even and all be saturated to the same degree. Make it a recipe for a mess. And after the liberation for this hip, cool, Commando Sorcerer here. These are the colors that I've opted for. I already knew what I wanted his ethnicity, if you will, to be. But I think the key colors that dominate here would be black and green. And then you might get different hues of that so that everything is not so uniform and fixed and rigid. But black, green, red maybe, and that will be it. Everything else will either be muted or not necessarily take away from those top three. Even the hair, which you could say is kind of black, has a bit of a brownish green tint to it. And at the tip, I have like a more yellowish or greenish yellow, or whatever at the edge. And this kind of mimics hairstyles that you would see in real life. But I was really happy with it because it really helps the character stand out as well. There are not many characters you would find, especially in the anime manga world that look like this. Having some of that green come in, even the fur being a slightly different color, it's still under that same hue-ish, but again, a little bit of yellow. You definitely get a golden yellow with the bullets, but we have a clear red scarf, red folded sleeves to a degree, and just work based off of those only. And so it's mainly green, black, red, and little dashes of yellow here and there, where everything looks practical, like just whoop this on, and he's not too much of a fashion person. But at the same time, green and black dominate, a little bit of red, they don't fight with each other. Yellow is more like golden accents, to maybe hint at a heritage of his. So some of these are symbolic choices, narrative choices. And so these colors should reflect that. You can imagine with a gold or a red, a gold will reflect royalty maybe, red, danger and stuff like that. Green, maybe agriculture, but also that commando vibe. And then the black is actually a common theme with almost all the characters and what that means in this world. But we put the color flats in the rendering and shading we did earlier together. We get this bad boy. Shape language is another major tip. The character has more round things going on that they're usually more harmless and daring, charismatic, fluffy, loving, soft. If it's more of a square or a box shape, they're more reliable, uniform, traditional, by the book, trustworthy. Triangle, usually more cunning, dynamic, competent, edgy, evil maybe, especially if the triangle is upside down. Pointy edges means danger. Look at a knife. The knife is kind of a triangle. You can also mix and match shapes. But just like with color, there should be a focal point. If a character is pretty much equally all shapes, then it'll be kind of weird to gauge who they are. You kind of want to make sure one shape is more than the rest. Now, you don't have to follow these rules to a T. Maybe you can have a character that's round and then you're playing around with the idea that a round character is evil and maybe it's a plot twist or whatever. But these rules and tips are good to know so you know what you're doing when you're putting this together. Look at the My Hero Academia characters. You have Ida with a square eye, Bakugo with a triangle eye, Deku with a circle, all representing what we talked about earlier. So even your favorite anime and manga use these to some degree. I've used it in previous videos. It's a key thing mentioned by other YouTubers that cover this stuff. While I was learning, I scoured the internet to learn all these things. So they were making it easier for me to share, make it easier for you guys to find. And it's very universal, regardless of the project. And so with our character here, all those bullets are essentially triangles, which work, right? Because they're dangerous, they're bullets. You got a triangle and a square to them. They're reliable, they'll pop you, and they're sharp at the edge, they'll hurt you. <laughs> And now I'm just going over the character design, showing you guys all these little pots where shape language is used for this character design. Generally, Asher is a reliable character, square body, a bit of a triangle at the head, especially with the one holding the pistol, kind of like his bullets. He does have a softness to him, but they're rarely any circles on the design, except for maybe his ear to show he's not that soft at all. In fact, he has another earring 
is pretty much a triangle, but a diamond is just two triangles together. And just like that, we have Lord Asher. The next videos will go into more detail about what exactly I did during the rendering and shading and coloring parts and how I even push it and do a little bit more to really make the illustration pop. So make sure you don't miss that and do all the fun engagement stuff. It helps a great deal. Follow me on all social media, hit the bell so you stay notified each time I pull absolutely anything, like, subscribe, you know what to do. Watch more character design videos on the channel. It's White Manga and I'm Audi 9000.